All right. So, hello. In the spirit of our theme here today, spheres of identity and influence, here's a question for you. What does it mean to be human? Really, truly human. We can start with some slides here, too. <laughs> In a moment, you'll see why we are one-tenth as human as we thought, and how this realization could be the missing piece in modern medicine and nutrition. We'll discover our inner ecosystems and how we can actually merge with the living world around us. We'll explore ancient cultures and what we can learn from their diets and lifestyle. Armed with this knowledge, we can steer ourselves towards a sustainable future on the path to vibrant health. All with a little help from my friends. They're microbes, and we cannot survive without them. So, what exactly are microbes? Well, they're the smallest, simplest forms of life on Earth. Microscopic, often invisible to the naked eye. You may know them as algae, bacteria, yeast, or mold. And let's face it, they've earned a pretty bad reputation over the years, what with plagues, malaria, swine flu pandemics, maybe worst of all, moldy leftovers. But I'm here to defend these tiny crusaders. They're much more than mindless minions that invade our body. Microbes were the original spark of life on Earth. They dominated two-thirds of our natural history, forming the building blocks of all living creatures to follow. And they still occupy places where no other life forms could survive. In fact, microbes define the outer limits of our biosphere. They occupy the deepest corners of the ocean, the coldest reaches of the Arctic, even high in the upper atmosphere. Most notably, they live right inside you and me, in astounding abundance. And we're not alone. All plants and animals have co-evolved in a symbiotic relationship with bacteria, fungi, and yeast. Archaea, also, is a cousin of bacteria, very common and a, called an extremophile. They're the ones that live in the dark corners. So groundbreaking studies, like the Human Microbiome Project, are taking a census of these populations inside us. Researchers have discovered more than 10,000 species along for the ride, sharing some 8 million genes with us, 300 times more genetic interaction than we ever knew before. Their influence on us is staggering. Like fingerprints, we each have our own very unique profile of microbes. And this inner ecosystem is as lush as a rainforest. Imagine this complex landscape on a tiny, tiny scale, teeming with microbes in constant harmony and competition. But like a rainforest, this is a sensitive environment that needs careful preservation. So let's take a moment to experience our own microbiome, the community of microscopic life forms that dwells within us all. Right now, on our skin alone, we are host to 500 different species with a billion organisms per square centimeter. Every fold of our skin, every nook and cranny serves as hospitable terrain for these guys. In our mouth, 20 billion little guys have set up shop. In our digestive tract, we hold three to five pounds of bacteria. In all, we harbor a population of microbes in excess of 100 trillion. Cell for cell, they outnumber us 10 to 1. And yes, we are a minority in our own body. So, Think of yourself as a superorganism, a walking metropolis with thousands of dis distinct life forms. And for them, our body is prime real estate. They will stand their ground for the privilege of living with us by fending off pathogens and disease. Now, let's take a closer look at one of the most densely populated regions, the urban center, if you will, our digestive system, <laughs> which is essentially a tube. And when you uncoil this tube, may I have a volunteer from the audience? <laughs> it stretches 20 feet long, tongue to tail. 
This is our human plumbing. Now, in the tube, our food is transformed into the very building blocks, the flesh, bone, and blood of our bodies. We really are what we eat. And we're learning that microbes fuel the fire. If we think of food as information, they are the interpreters. Many of them flock to the small intestine where nutrients are absorbed into the bloodstream. These are actually transient visitors who complete their work in a few days and then make their way out. But even so, their role in our health is crucial. The true powerhouse of microbe colonies lies in the final stage, the large intestine. We call these guys native probiotics. They're a gift from our mother as we exit the sterile womb and enter the bustling world of microbes. This inoculation forms the core of our immune system, and these natives take up permanent residence in our gut for life. Now, another example of deep symbiosis can be found in just about every cell of plants and animals. Mitochondria are like cells within cells that basically serve as an energy supply. The curious fact is that mitochondria have a completely different genome than their host. And it's much more like that of bacteria. They're, so all complex life forms have accepted the help of outsiders on a deeply fundamental level. In exchange for safe haven, the mitochondria, a separate species, provide a vital power boost to each and every cell. It sort of begs the question again, are we really only human? So consider this. Each of us is the pilot of a prototype 200,000 years in the making. We're a truly remarkable machine. Only in the last 10,000 years did humans even master agriculture. Only in the last century have we found ways to industrialize our food supply. And even in the last decade, we've seen sweeping changes to much of what we eat. In training as a healing food specialist, we studied how diet relates to human history. We focused on the eating habits of isolated cultures, untouched by modern industrial foods, all of them enjoying robust health generation after generation. According to the studies of Dr. Weston Price, there was only one thing missing, chronic illness. Now, a common thread amongst these indigenous cultures was their instinct to preserve and enhance their harvests. They all learned to harness the power of microbes. Nowadays, we call this fermentation, creating a selective environment that encourages an abundance of beneficial bacteria while keeping mold and pathogens at bay. Fermentation has been practiced on every continent with thousands of unique methods for tens of thousands of years. Our ancestors realized that their food is immediately altered by airborne yeast and mold and will either rot or ferment. That same food, submerged in a salty brine, will reject the spoilers and selects for our beneficial partners. Even without the luxury of microscopes and laboratories, every known culture came to, be, came to understand these basic principles and held them to be sacred. Fermentation experts agree, this knowledge preceded our grasp of agriculture, perhaps even fire. Cave paintings depict early man collecting honey from beehives over 12,000 years ago. With that in mind, here's a little bedtime story from Sandor Katz, author and fermenting wizard. He imagines one of our ancient ancestors, you know, paleo guy or, or gal, stumbling across a beehive nestled high in a tree. Rain washes honey down the trunk to collect in the vessel of a hollow log. There, the sweet water mixes with airborne yeasts and begins to bubble with effervescence. Curiously, he kneels down by the log, and he scoops up the strange brew. He drinks, and he drinks some more. He drinks himself silly, really. Was this some gift from the gods? Unknowingly, Paleo Guy discovers the original alcoholic delight, honey mead. This happy accident is thought to mark a giant leap forward for mankind. And the rest, as you already saw, is history. <laughs> Beyond our familiar wines, beers, ciders, and sakis, we've come to enjoy cheese, yogurt, breads, and condiments, along with artisanal pickles, 
sauerkrauts and kimchi, all processes carried out by microbes. Even the production of chocolate and coffee involve these guys. Another rising star of the scene is kombucha. It's a traditional tea fermented with a scoby, or a symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast. Scoby. The colony forms a solid mass known as the mother, who eventually divides in half to form a baby scoby. These self-perpetuating colonies can be passed along for many years to come. Kefir is another popular scoby these days. Olives, anchovies, sausages, all get a little help from our friends. Plus, they're the original value-added food. Wine is more valuable than grapes, cheese more valuable than milk, kraut more than cabbage, and so on. Historically, cultured foods offered complex new flavors and a regional signature. The process allowed for movement of goods over greater and greater distance. They provided sustenance during off-seasons and long voyages at sea. No electricity or fancy equipment was involved, just a jar, perhaps some salt. The tradition was passed down through generations, and they knew that a side dish of ferments with every meal would support a strong constitution and aid in digestion. Only after the advent of refrigeration and chemical preservatives did we start to miss out on the benefits of cultured food. This was the dawn of germ theory the war on bugs. Newfangled methods like canning and pasteurization were invented to obliterate germs with high heat and pressure. Little did we know this shift towards large-scale production was also destroying fragile enzymes and vitamins despite the apparent convenience. Before the allure of all this technology, ferments were given ample time and care to develop properly. After all, you can't rush nature. This artisanal craft doesn't lend itself to a mass industrial approach. Where time is money and consistency is king, traditional ways were gradually sidestepped. Eventually, we were left with sterile imitations of these ancient living foods. Modern civilization is now plagued with chronic illness, and this may be rooted in the major shifts in our diet over the last century. At the core of the problem, is a widespread condition known as dysbiosis, a serious imbalance of our gut flora. Contaminants in our food and water supply wreak havoc on our bodies. Oversterilization has left us in a hygiene crisis. Hand sanitizers, mouthwashes, deodorants, household cleaners, they're all chipping away at our microbiome. Powerful antibiotics are wiping out any microbes in their path, good or bad. All of this leaves us with gaps in this living shield of ours, gaps where disease can take hold. We must constantly replenish our colonies of friendly flora. This is just a simple numbers game, maintaining the proper balance of good guys that crowd out the invaders. Much like homemade ferments, we can create that selective environment both in the mason jar and here in our gut. Fortunately now, we're enjoying a fermentation renaissance. We're letting go of this fear of germs and embracing a new perspective on a very old idea. Science confirms that living foods can bring on profound improvements to our health. Probiotics are proving to be the best defense against pathogens. This buzzword, probiotic, really means for life. And lately, these supplements are flooding the market. But just keep something in mind here. Food labs have confirmed that a single serving of homemade ferments can deliver 10 trillion new guests to the party. Even against the strongest commercial supplements, a little bowl of grandma's kraut equals an entire bottle of lab-grown probiotics. Plus, ferments offer far more diversity, which is crucial to building a strong colony. Each strain carries out a unique task to maintain a thriving ecosystem, which in turn supports our well-being. This is why ferments play a major role in reversing allergies, digestive ailments, autoimmune disorders, even mental conditions. Therapeutic servings of these rich probiotic foods are turning the pantry into a medicine cabinet. Certain species deliver powerful enzymes, which are the, the catalyst for good digestion. 
Others actually synthesize nutrients like vitamins B and K. They neutralize toxins, they regulate the acidity of our gut, and most importantly, they form the headquarters of our immune system. They guide our bodies, allowing us to truly integrate with our environment, like logging onto some kind of primeval internet. We are wise to take our lead from nature. Evolution has been a very long chain of adaptations and solutions. Nature has always been an abundance of solutions. So, microbes everywhere. These are sentient beings, the ever-present groundkeepers of their terrain. Let's remember that we humans are just the latest guests in the vast community of microbes. We live in their world. We evolve together, entwined and symbiotic. They come rushing into us the moment we're born, flowing through us like an endless stream every day of our lives. They become our silent partners. And when our life comes to an end, they break us down to form new life and continue on their quiet journey through the ages. So let's take ownership and responsibility for our microbiome. Let's make friends with our microbes. Thank you.